Hi there. It should be about 7 or 7.01, and so we're ready to start. Well, of course, at the last minute, my computer said it didn't want to play with me. But because I have backup electronics, we're still able to go on. So, looking forward to talking to you tonight. So, welcome to Third Thursday Thinking Thursday, March 20th, 2000, March 19th, 2020. <sighs> Several people asked me earlier if we would be talking about what's going on with the wonderful coronavirus. And I said, sure, I'll have some tips to managing that. But as always, we want to start with breathing. So if this is your first time on, we always start with taking a few deep breaths to clear our mind so that we're able to just focus. So I want everyone to take in a deep breath, breathe in slowly, in, in, in. Now breathe out. Take in another deep breath. Now breathe out. Take in one more deep breath. And slowly breathe out. Hopefully you have gotten rid of few of the cares of today as we sit and talk. I'm Bronwyn Lucas, a licensed professional counselor, a life coach, a Reiki therapist, and an ordained minister. So I wear a lot of hats, but they're all involved helping others become their best. Um, and today, getting ready for this has just been a real strange situation. As I said, they're... Um, the uh, computer stopped working. Did you just send me a text? There is someone at my door who I don't know. So I'm not quite sure what's going on, but my son's taking care of it. So as we go on with this, um, as we go on with this, let's talk about it. So everybody's worried about what's going on right now. How are we going to manage this issue with the coronavirus, when really managing it is out of our hands. Managing the virus is, but how we manage ourselves is not. So we have to stop and think, what am I going to do for me? How am I going to handle it? Well, as always, I have a list of things we can do. Um, and I'm talk, I'll talk about them. I'm not here to give you facts and figures about the virus. I'm giving you facts and figures about taking care of yourself. I'm all about your mental health and how you can handle that. Um, so first thing I'm going to say is take a break from the news. Everyone is watching and I do too. And in order to get ready for tonight, I watched everything I could to have as many facts and I would have a good understanding of what's going on. But in doing that, after a while, I had to stop and say, really? Enough is enough. Hi, Kimberly and Eugene. See you on. Good to see you today. Um, but I had enough. So even your social media, fortunately, you know, you're on Facebook and a lot of people are saying things, but a lot of people are, are making jokes. And it's not joking about what's going on. It's joking so that you can um, lighten up a little bit. There are some pretty funny memes out there. Uh, some, however, will make you really think. But take a break. We do need to be aware of everything that's going on. We need to know um, what to do, what not to do. Those things are very important. But stop and don't get so inundated with it that you just can't function anymore. The second thing is take care of yourself. One of the things, and I researched this and I laugh when um, I'm, I have a list of things I'm going to go through, and I got them from things like the CDC, from SAMHSA, and looked at credible websites about how to help people manage. And the first thing on several lists were, was to simply deep breathe. And you know that I believe in that. Just taking three or four calming breaths can calm you down in a crazy situation. So when your anxiety starts to rise, take some deep breaths. Pray and meditate. Um, take time out. And some of us have more time on our hands than we want because you're not going to work. So take time out to meditate. Find scripture to hold on to. Um, there's so much in the word. One scripture that um, many people have been using 
for to give them confidence, Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not um, anxiously look about, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And several people have used that scripture just to find comfort because we want to be comforted in this time. So pray, meditate. Another thing is to stretch and exercise. Exercise, and I've talked about this before, exercise um, releases happy hormones, those endorphins in your brain. So, and just stretching, exercising, letting your body, don't get static. It's easy to become a couch potato when you get stuck at home or even just have sedentary activity. Stretch, exercise, get out and walk. Do the things that would normally keep you healthy. Another one is eat healthy, especially if you're getting ready to be more sedentary than you normally are. Your body's going to need um, some healthy things to help you out. Get plenty of rest. And that goes back to the first point of taking time away from the social media and looking at um, too much news because that can actually raise anxiety. So take time for rest and avoid, yes, avoid alcohol and drugs. Um, that's not going to help you. You know, getting that, okay, a glass of wine here and there, not a problem. However, avoid too much of that because it's really not going to help at all, as I said. Another one is um, take time to do some of the things you wanted to do around the house for those that are stuck and you're not going to work, you're not going here, you can't go anywhere. Most of us have things or projects we want to do around the house. Here's that closet you've been planning to clean out. Well, now is the time. Or right, there is that um, something you wanted. You have, maybe have a room or an area that's out of control. You have nothing else to do. Put it in control. For me, I want to clean out my garage. Um, I'm, I've been saying I wanted to paint my living room. So maybe as I'm stuck at home, can't do anything, I'll get some painting done. I'll get that garage done. Who knows? But take time to just do some things you want to do that you never have time to do. Well, now you have time. Get them done. Uh, the next point is take time to connect with others. You know, you're stuck in the house, like on weekends, if, even if you still are going to work, on weekends you're not working and there's nowhere to go. You can't go to a movie. You can't go to the store. You can't do this. So you're at home. Connect with other people. Pick up the phone. And talk to people you haven't talked to because you never have time. You're always busy. On weekends, you're always running around. You won't be doing that. Call people. Talk. That's an old thing we used to do. Yes, talk on the phone. Also, have those trusted friends you can talk to when you're um, feeling anxious, when the anxiety level gets too high for you. Have someone you can talk to. At the end, I will talk about talking to a therapist. That's my role. I'm here. I can help you with that. But talk to people. Just get out and you don't have to talk about just the coronavirus. Talk about what's going on in your life. I'm here to catch up. What's been going on? We don't have to talk about just the here and now. And the last thing is take time to have fun. It's like, okay, I'm stuck in the house. How am I supposed to have fun? Try to do some new activities. Do things that you already enjoy. If you have children at home, we're going to talk about the children next, but do things with them that are fun. Maybe work on cooking with your children. Um, create new things. I was talking to somebody today and they said, you know, I used to try to knit or crochet. I think I'm going to do that now because they're not getting out. Um, read a book. And increase your mind, but do something that's just fun and relaxing because you can only watch so much Netflix, Hulu, or Prime TV. After a while, it gets old and your mind will turn to mush. We tell the kids to stay off of screen time. We do too. But the second part of this in how do you manage this stress, how do you manage it for your children? Take a moment to think about what it's like for the kids. Okay, spring break is that week off where you have fun and things are planned because parents were planning for you to be off, activities are planned, and there are places you can go and you can't wait to go. If it's going to an amusement park or for those in Houston going to the rodeo or high schoolers hanging out at the mall going to the movies, that's good for spring break. You can do all that and that's one week. 
What happens when one week turns to two, three, four, ten, twenty, 10, 20, and none of those things you can do? For children, it can be stressful. So look at, as a parent, take time to monitor their reactions to what's going on. Are they crying? Are they withdrawn? Are they not wanting to play? Are they fearful, worried? Um, younger children may even regress to past uh, behaviors because when they can't get out, I don't really understand why we can't go anywhere. Um, and you'll see younger children regressing in some of their behaviors. You may see irritability and acting out because I'm not going anywhere. I'm bored with you, mom, dad, sister, brother. I'm bored. And you may get act, acting out. Sleepiness, I mean, sleeplessness. Um, you may see nightmares. All of these things over time you may see. So you begin to just monitor their reactions and see how the kids are doing so you'll know what to do with them. You'll know, oh, well, maybe this is a sign of stress. Speaking of that, the second point is take time to reassure them and validate their concerns. You don't want to over reassure, reassure. Oh, everything's going to be all right. We'll be out of this by next week. Well, you don't know when this is going to be over, so don't say things that you can't promise. The truth is, yes, we're in a stressful, you know, people are getting sick, so everyone's staying home so we don't get sick. Um, we're trying to protect you. We're trying to protect each other. You're keeping it simple. You don't want to um, say anything that's going to scare them while you're trying to reassure them. Um, and you want to limit their access to the news as well, because especially younger children, they're not going to get it. They're not going to understand all this out there. So limit their ad access. You need to be informed. They need to be informed by you. Not necessarily some of the things they hear in the news. The younger they are, the less able they're going to be able to really process it all. Um, and even your teenagers, it might be too much for them. You know your child. Let, so be there to let them understand the situation on an age-appropriate level. The fourth thing about children is take time to develop some routines at home around school. They're not in school. Many schools have online options where they are um, they have it so that kids can log in. Teachers are sending emails. There's this is the work that has to be done. Some schools have packets, and parents can actually go and pick up a packet of information, a packet of work for their kids. If not, get online, find something, but carve out a couple hours a day, each day, for your kids to work to keep up with school. Even if you don't know what they're doing and your school hasn't provided anything, there are many things you can look at online, such as, um, you know, typing in reading passages for third grade, 11th grade um, science activities, or whatever grade they're in, you can type it and you can find uh, different things. For older kids, there's Khan Academy, and they can work on their math skills. There's um, so many things, but uh, from, from all ages, from your high schoolers down to your preschoolers, find a way to keep them. You know, in the summer, we worry about the summer brain drain. We don't need to have the COVID-19 brain drain. So do some things to keep them active and keep them um, academically sound. And the last thing on the children is take time to be the model of calm. If you are anxious and nervous, you're going to pass it on to the kids. So don't do that. Allow yourself to remain calm. And when you think about it, if you stress out, and you're totally just can't take it and you're anxious, is that going to fix it? It's not. So why bother to be, why bother to be in that space? Because it's not going to change it. Now I'm looking away for a minute. If you got on late, I told you at the last minute, my computer decided it's not going to let me on Facebook. So I had to change platforms and I had to change the way everything was set up. I had my nice little setup where I look at the computer, had the notes in one place, everything had to change. So I was trying to pull up one last thing I wanted to share with you, but I won't. But I will say this, um, as you look at this and we're thinking of how to de-stress, I gave you those points and I will post them later tonight. And this video will be on and you can share with others if you so desire. I want you to take a moment to just think about all of those who are impacted by this situation. We all are. 
your first responders, your medical professionals. They're, they're on the line because it is their job to take care. Every time they go in, they're at risk. But I want you also to think about those children who are in abusive homes. And school is an outlet for them. And they are there. Those spouses who are in abusive relationships. And they're going to be home more. So this situation has put some people in some perilous situations that you may not think of. These are people we need to really think about and pray for. Through no fault of their own, they are in a more perilous situation. So it may, it, has, it can cause a lot of stress, but again, the stress will not, stressing about it will not change it. So hopefully these pointers will make you just think. They're very simple, but sometimes the simplest things are the best things. So hopefully next month when we come back together on the third Thursday, we'll be saying, who we're getting through this. It's better. But until then, fear not, stress not, and breathe. See you next month.